Hey, how's it going, everyone? Thank you for joining me on a new episode of the Music for Your Podcast. My name's Josh, and thanks for joining me on a new album review. This album is going to be uh, Glowing in the Dark. The band is Django Django, and the album was released on February 12th, but just a bit shy of, of about a month ago. And, um, yeah, uh, pretty interesting band overall. I always thought Django Django has had a pretty unique sound to them. Um, in my opinion, they're a little bit underrated as well. They have uh, faltered a little bit since their um, debut album around 2012 when they seem to be kind of like the uh, loved uh, next big indie rock band. But uh, it kind of seems like the hype has died down a bit since then, but we'll get into more of that. But uh, yeah, before we get started... I want to let everyone know that a new episode of Best and Worst Track of the Week just dropped a couple days ago. If you have not streamed that yet, you can stream it um, on the service you're listening to now or YouTube. Uh, it ended up being Pop Smoke and A Boogie with the Hoodie versus NF as the artists that were Best and Worst. Um, also covering some tracks from uh, Tiesto, Jake Owen... Uh, Lil Yachty, Ariana Grande, Cali Uchis, uh, and some other newer artists on there. Uh, if you're interested in uh, hearing some track reviews from those artists, go ahead and check out that episode of Best Orange Track of the Week. Uh, also, um, the last album review dropped at this point, uh, quite uh, about over a week ago at this point, uh, Arlo Parks' uh, Collapsed in Sunbeams. If you haven't uh, checked that out or missed that one, I did drop that um, on the uh, podcast and YouTube side. I thought that was a pretty great album. Um, you, you know, it wasn't uh, mind-blowing or anything, but I thought it was a good, consistent debut overall for the young Arlo Parks. Uh, but yeah, that's pretty much it. Also, I dropped a newer video um, between now and then on the YouTube channel. If you uh, are not familiar with the YouTube channel, uh, I just dropped a, uh, a video that covered uh, a lot of uh, newer tracks. It's something I'm considering to do maybe semi-frequently uh, from artists that I don't really get to cover just singles from, especially since uh, Best and Worst Track of the Week. Um, I just get a lot of the tracks just from the Billboard Hot 100, and by the time I drop Best and Worst Track of the Week, uh, the tracks aren't so fresh anymore. So uh, the video is titled uh, Jid, The Next Kendrick, and then New Track Reviews. Uh, covered some tracks from bands like uh, Wolf Alice, Julian Baker, Caracara Bonito, and Dayglo. So uh, if you're interested in hearing some thoughts from newer tracks that dropped about a week ago at this point, check out that video on the YouTube channel. Uh, but yeah, let's go ahead and get to the gist of this album review. Alright, so thanks for tuning in again. The album is uh, Glowing in the Dark by the band Django Django. Uh episode 49 at this point for the podcast for album reviews so we are approaching uh 50 um pretty soon um don't know what i'm gonna do yet more than likely it's gonna be the julian baker album but uh yeah anyways uh this is a their british art rock band Django Django, formed in 2009 um and they just released their fourth album, titled Glowing in the Dark. You know that already. It looks like the band formed in London, if that even matters to point out. And for some reason, I always thought they were Australian. I don't know why. But yeah, they're British. They're from the UK. Uh, the band caught my attention around 2012 when I had just graduated high school. Uh, coincidentally, the debut album, self-titled album, uh, was released that year. Uh, and I can remember hearing Default, one of the singles from that album, for the first time and being quite captivated by how unique uh, their their sound was, really. I uh, hadn't really heard a band um, with that sort of style uh, before. And even around that time, I was listening to, you know, some more underground bands. I wasn't, you know, quite a, uh, I guess, uh, quote-unquote indie head or... Um, you know, super into underground stuff, but I was certainly listening to uh, more smaller bands uh, from the average, you know, person my age, I think. Um, but anyways, um, yeah, it was kind of pretty, I was pretty interested uh, about how Django Django had like this quirky electronic indie rock blend with like these really cool um, harmonies, vocal harmonies that were just 
so perfectly executed and um, so and the the textures of the voices would blend so well to like this sort of um, I don't know how to describe the vocal tone but just a very unique way of singing as well um, really good vocal harmonies that's a very that's a strong point of this band um, I can only really think of a couple more acts that really pull it off that nicely um, you know I'm thinking of like maybe uh, war paint uh, even though their music's a little bit different from Django Jang but yeah, there's several artists that have come throughout the years that have really uh, executed uh, vocal harmonies quite well. Um, I'd say at, at this point it might be expectation if you're really going to want to pursue music uh, or live music uh, in some sort of fashion. Uh, but on the indie rock side, I uh, mentioned War Paint and then maybe uh, you know, Alt-J, which I'd say Alt-J um, coming, around, coming out around the same time. Um, I think maybe Django Django beat him to the punch a little bit earlier from All J's first uh, album. Don't quote me on that, but um, I guess you could say Django Django was like a sort of precursor to how big I guess Alt J and bands like maybe Glass Animals, like this indie psych rock uh, stuff in the UK, would eventually become or how big it would eventually become. I feel like you can maybe categorize Django Django to be somewhere in, within that vein. And I even have some fond memories of even physically ripping their debut album from their their CD um, in my first college dorm room and uploading it into my Google Music Library, which was something I was doing habitually at the time from various artists. Uh, RIP to the Google Music service that was uh, really ahead of its time, um, kind of some stuff. Uh, this is a tangent, but a really cool service that uh, helped me, um, you know, organize and uh, eventually uh, listen to tons of music throughout the years uh, in the early 2010s. Uh, that was completely free, so yeah. Uh, but anyways, Spotify came around, uh, but different story for another day. The guys are a quartet that seem to have met in college. And it seems like the band uh, were surprised by the earlier success, the nomination of a Mercury Prize in 2012, and publications putting the self-titled on their year end list with much critical acclaim. Um, it seemed like the band really had the intention of being a small indie act that maybe sold a few hundred copies, which I'm sure is the story for count the story for countless other bands uh, all over the world. Uh, but the band does have interesting roots with some members being originally from Ireland and Scotland. They're not all originally from London. And also David McLean, I believe, is a drummer having a few family members with success in the arts as well. Um, it's, a, it's a really, it, I find it to be almost an anomaly that the band seemed to have peaked um, since their first album. Um, you know, it seems like it hasn't been tumbling downhill, but certainly not to the, uh, I guess, the magnitude uh, since then There has their music been received. Um, it doesn't really seem like the band has had as much media attention or critical acclaim uh, when they're just fresh out the oven, you know. It's a bit interesting because the band hasn't really seemed to have changed anything up. Uh, much or even a lost much of a step either so not sure really what the deal is on that and uh, their previous album Marvel Skies uh, which was released in 2018 um, I thought that was uh, listen to that album preparation for this review and it's overall a, a pretty consistent album it doesn't really deviate much away from what you'd expect the band to have pulled off uh, you know they kick off the uh, first track with a um, a killer '80s uh, styled cut with some uh, with some powerful synths that would fit quite naturally on like blinding lights by the weekend nowadays. The next track, "Surface to Air," is a weird dance hall inspired uh, track that works. Uh, which I guess in 2018, uh, that's kind of coming off the tail end uh, of when like dance hall was really prominent in like a lot of hip hop music, a la Drake. Um, Tic Tac Toe is an easy, remarkable track, or rememberable track, with uh, its easygoing, anthemic indie rock nature. I know I've heard it come up a bit on some Spotify radio stations, 
uh, and various indie radio stations. So uh, definitely not too much of a like of a underground cut for the band. Beat Me Up uh, had some retro flavor to it with its electronic instrumentation. Uh, had an uh, had an interesting dark psych influence to it as well, which I think the band really uh, shows off its strengths when it's uh, kind of uh, flexing its psych influence. Uh, the track uh, "Real Gone" uh, reminded me a lot of the band uh, Jaguar Ma, uh, I believe an Australian band. Don't quote me on that. Uh, with its focus synth work, structuring the track, and Overall, most of the tracks uh, seem quite standard for what you'd expect on a Django Django album. If anything, I like that the album overall was concise and heavy hitting for the most part. And in comparing it to this new uh, album, Glowing in the Dark, uh, it seems like the band went in with uh, experimentation of mine, um, but still wanting to keep a level of consistency that doesn't delve away from their traditional sound too much. And I think that's exactly what we got in Glowing in the Dark. Um, it's easily a solid album. Uh, there's nothing wrong with that. I'd say it's probably as enjoyable as Marvel Skies. I honestly couldn't pick which one I prefer, uh, just because I'm not that heavy of a Django Django listener. But um, it, you can put both of them on at the end of the day, and I'd say they're you know just fine. Um, but, you know, get, getting into, like, the gist of, like, this album, uh, the, their latest one here, uh, we get a track that I find to be one of probably the most more memorable Django Django tracks I've heard, Spirals. Uh, it opens up with a synth ostinato arpeggiated melody that guides the track, and it grows faster and faster as the track's introduced. Um, and the track really has this nice gritty effect-soaked bass line that cuts through quite a bit. It's a bit of an interesting direction that the band went with that kind of made the album feel or this track feel a bit more raw in comparison to like a lot of the stuff on the previous album. Uh, and then definitely here we get a lot of psych nature to it with uh, the typical Django Django aesthetic uh, with their haunting vocalizations and harmonies. Um, the chorus is memorable as well. It's quite hooky. I really think that uh, this track... Uh, did that well. I feel like maybe the album could have used more of this to make just the tracks a bit more memorable overall. Um, I like the elongated instrumental interlude in the track as well that really highlights all the textures in this track. It's a really lush track. Uh, and also some nice guitar work thrown in all over. Uh, not bad, although the track maybe lasted a bit too long, but then again, that really didn't bother me too much. Didn't quite really find this track to be as much of a highlight, but there were some interesting bits about it. Um, there's a laid back feel to it, surf rock like, uh, hints of new wave as well. Uh, also, the guitar work at times made me feel like it was a bit similar to like some of the stuff you'd expect off like Dive, uh, Dive the band. Uh, and then kind of lost it, this track kind of lost a bit of the charm um, that maybe the f intro track had with the, it not having as much psych elements presented. But the track does have a nice upbeat flair to it, at least. Um, and I'm not really sure what to think on this track. It wasn't terrible. Uh, but there certainly were better tracks on this album. Got Me Worried is a pretty good example of that. The next track um, has some typical and mechanical quirkiness that's typical of like the Django Django style as well. Uh, I love the stretchy and textured guitar like pick work that's kind of thrown in on this track. I love the short bubbly synth textures on this track that color it quite nicely and we get a nice arrival and build up to the climatic chorus that's on this track guided by some light falsetto vocals. This track also features a bass line that slides around uh, that supports everything on the chorus quite well. I thought that uh, sort of uh, implementation of the bass on that track was done quite nicely. It's a pretty cool track. Uh, Waking Up, I feel, is another interesting, solid one as well. This time featuring a female artist on here, which I think happened on the last album as well. Um, I like the more organic textures on this track that are structured around acoustic guitar. Um, the colorful, haunting vocals come back that are, are really uh, play to the strengths of the band. Um, and it highlights kind of like that psych influence as well. Um, so yeah, I uh, love the underlying melodic bass groove on here. Some good bass work, keeping it consistent throughout the album. Uh, but the, this track also is a bit of an outlier in the context of the album. 
Um, I'd say this kind of fits in with what I was mentioning earlier when they're trying to have an experimentation in mind. I'd say this track maybe is a good example of that. Uh, Free From Gravity, um, definitely th this track definitely had a much different direction. Some more, I guess, quote unquote experimentation. Uh, poppy, to say the least, seems like it was trying to be a little bit accessible. Uh, kind of reminds me of some of Jaguar Ma's music as well here, again, uh, with some of the vocal stylings and electronic elements that are implemented. Uh, but I'm not really sure if this sort of thing works for the band. It's an interesting direction, uh, but the track maybe just feels a bit stagnant for most uh, for most of the time. Uh, next track was Head Rush. Uh, opens up with like some cool block hit auxiliary drum sounds uh, that are kind of memorable. A punk-like and bright bass line cutting through quite nicely. Um, I like how some of the melodic material lines up with the vocals in the bass line as well. It uh, happens throughout other tracks on the album, and it comes out nicely every time. Uh, nice call and response backing vocals on this track as well. It's not a bad cut. It has its moments, but maybe it can feel a bit dragged out as well. Um, Next track was The Arc. It kind of blends in from the previous track. Don't have much to say about this track. I didn't really find it to be uh, that much of a highlight. It was a bit of an oddball. Uh, Night of the Buffalo, I feel like, is a solid track. I love the return of the signature haunting vocal harmonies on here that the band does quite well, uh, as usual. Very jam-like nature on this track with buzzy guitars that nicely that guide the track nicely as well. Um, a developed bridge section here with some colorful harmonies and instrumental textures um, happens as well. Um, and I love how the bass and vocals line up on this track. I said it not too long ago. It happens again here and it makes the track quite nice. Uh, and then here we get like a bit of a, I guess, curveball. We have a string outro, like this chamber quartet, or I don't really know what's going on, but it's something of that vein that is... I don't know if the band performed it or if they just hired some orchestral musicians to play it, but it came out quite nice and beautiful. Um, made the track really nice. Um, the World Will Turn, um, I will say, didn't find it to be too much of a highlight, but th it does feature some uh, experimentation, like I pointed out earlier. But even with all of the uh, experimentation with like the light string textures and plucked acoustic guitar, that's not too characteristic of the band. The track has some of their signature vocals to keep it consistent, at least. Uh, Kick the Devil Out. Uh, here I thought this was a much needed, I guess, uh, return to form or I guess energy, um, some much needed energy at this point. Uh, we get a bit of a funkier sounding and upbeat track. Uh, love the lead guitar um, counter melodies throughout the track as well. They're executed quite well compositionally. It makes the track better. Uh, some tight pocket style drumming. That's great. Um, this track kind of resembles a lot of like indie pop from like maybe the late 2000s or maybe even some Brit pop. Remind me a bit of like a Blur track or some Blur influence. Um, next track, Glowing in the Dark, the title track, uh, thought to be a bit of a weird turn and in, in, in terms of like, you know, their experimentation, there's some poppiness to it, not very rock-like. Um, it sounds like Hot Chip, if you're familiar with that UK band, Hot Chip, uh, with the grainy sounding synths, uh, the syncopated drum groove that structures the track, um... It contrasts highly to like a lot of different, a lot of the other tracks on the album, such as The World Will Turn. Uh, but it's a fun track, um, uh, you know, for the most part. It's not bad. Hold Fast didn't really, you know, think too much of it either. Some more hot chip influence for some reason. Um, it's spacey. There's some bubbly electronic elements that structure everything. It wasn't bad, but I didn't find it to be too captivating. And then the last track of the album, finally, Asking for More, wasn't too sold on this, especially for it ending the album. I feel like it was kind of a drab way to end this album. Uh, Mid-tier, filler-like in comparison to a lot of the other great tracks on here. Um, a nice keyboard uh, chord progression that structures the track, I'd say that. But it was, you know... Not bad, but very meh as well. Um, and yeah, that's kind of like my uh, take on the album, track by track. Um, overall, though, to tie it up, um, 
I feel like the band still has tons of potential and maybe there's some burst of it um, on this album. Uh, you know, it started out strong. Um, you know, the, if the track maybe was as memorable all throughout, track by track, with, uh, you know, how they opened it up on Spirals, I would have really dug the hell out of this album. Um, and then there were, you know, other points that I felt like, hey, that's a good direction the band went in. For instance, tracks like Head Rush or uh, Night of the Buffalo, I found to be quite nice, or even Kick the Devil Out. I wouldn't have minded more of that. So this album overall is kind of a hodgepodge. Um, I feel like, like I said earlier, it's experimentation, but they're still trying to keep it in the Django Django uh, school of thought, if you will. But um, not a bad album at all, really. Um, I really wanted to enjoy it more, but I feel like it's a 6 out of 10, which at the end of the day really isn't bad. Um, I feel like if you're a G hardcore Django Django fan or just fans of bands like in this vein, like, I don't know, Alt-J, maybe earlier Glass Animals, um, I don't know. Or if you're like very into like psyche stuff like uh, Deer Hunter, for instance, uh, you might really dig this album or you just might find it to be average. If you just like your typical or just like casual indie rock listener, you might find a track or two off of this album that you really dig. But I feel like it might not be that memorable either. The vast amount of music that's out there too. So uh, yeah, I don't know. This album I think is mainly for uh, really people that are really interested in what Django Django are doing nowadays. Um Maybe tracks like Spirals. I've heard it a bit on some indie rock rotation. Um, maybe that'll uh, captivate or strike the interest of more people. But anyways, yeah. Uh, if you stick around to the end of the review, thank you for joining me on this album review. My name is Josh. I'm a music reviewer. And uh, yeah, thanks for joining me. Don't know what's next, really. Well, I do know what's next. I'm pretty sure it's Julian Baker. Hopefully I'll drop that not too far away from now. After that, I don't know, maybe Kings of Leon. Uh, a lot of stuff is dro dropping. It's kind of overwhelming right now. And I don't know really what to cover. So uh, if you ever have any suggestions, leave it in the comment section on YouTube. Send me a voice message in Anchor. Uh, like and subscribe on YouTube or just leave some feedback, good or bad. And also subscribe on your uh, desired streaming service. Uh, yeah, but that's it. I'll see you guys later.